This video is the second part of problem solving based on lecture 1 to 5 of my series on complex analysis. If you have not watched those videos before you so start solving problems, I'd recommend you to watch those videos. So the first problem today is, as you can see on screen, a point Z has been plotted in the complex plane as shown in the figure below. So this is Z. As you can see in the yellow dot, a point inside the unit circle in the first quadrant. The plot for, the question is the plot for the point Y equals to 1 by Z is, there are four options. So the basic question is, if Z is a point in the first quadrant inside an unit circle, where 1 by Z will lie? Fine. So to find that, okay, fine. Let us first assume that Z equals to X plus IY. Then since Z is a point in the first quadrant, X and Y both will be greater than 0. And since it is inside the unit circle and mod of Z will be less than 1. Now mod of Z is less than 1 means that is we can write square root of x square plus y square less than 1. Therefore, if we combine everything, since x y greater than 0, we can say 0 less than square root of x square plus y square less than 1. So, this is what we get. Fine. Now, let us find out if this is z, what is 1 by z? So now 1 divided by z is equal to 1 by x plus i y that is equal to if I multiply x minus i y in the numerator and denominator we will be getting x divided by x square plus y square plus i into minus y divided by x square plus y square. So this will be my x plus i y. So if I think of uh, uh, seeing it as a plus i b, so this is my a and this is my b. So now see x is greater than 0. Suddenly x square plus y square is greater than 0. So this a is greater than 0. Now y is greater than 0. x square plus y square is greater than 0. So this ratio is greater than 0. Now there is a negative sign. So this b will be less than 0. So this 1 by z actually is a point, if I think it is in terms of coordinate, it is an ordered pair a, b where a is greater than 0, b is less than 0. So where this 1 by z will lie? Pretty simple. It will lie in the fourth quadrant. Now if we scan the options, in the first and the fourth option, this 1 by z is lying in the fourth quadrant. Now in one case, uh, this y is lying inside the unit circle for option A and for option D, this y is lying outside the unit circle. Now we need to find out that, that where this 1 by z is lying. In fourth quadrant, that's okay, but inside the unit circle or outside the unit circle. For that, we need to find out what is mod of 1 divided by z. Now mod of 1 divided by z will be mm, simple mod of this is x divided by x square plus y square plus i into minus y divided by x square plus y square. The mod of this because this is 1 by z. So that means this will be square root of x square plus y square divided by x square plus y square whole square if you apply the formula for mod. So that means this will be equal to 1 divided by square root of x square plus y square, pretty simple. So mod of 1 by z is equal to this. Now see, based on this relationship, based on this relationship, we know that this x square plus y square is less than 1. So since x square plus y square is less than 1, sorry, square root of x square plus y square is less than 1, 1 by square root of x square plus y square will be greater than 1. So what we are getting? We are getting therefore 
mod of 1 by z is greater than 1. So, 1 by z is such a complex number such that mod of 1 by z is greater than 1. That means mod of 1 by z is greater than 1 implies this 1 by z lies outside the unit circle. So, uh, considering all this, our answer will be option D because in option D, the point 1 by z that is y is loud, lying outside the unit circle. So, this is the answer for this problem. So, the next one. Evaluate 1 plus root 3i divided by 1 minus root 3i whole to the power 10. Fine. So, uh, in the numerator and denominator, you can see there is 1 and root 3. So, this triggers automatically in our, um, in, in our mind that if we can make it half and root 3 by 2, then we will have an advantage because half and root 3 by 2 are the cosine and sine values for pi by 3. So, keeping in mind, if we adjust that, we can write 2 to the power 10 half plus i into root 3 divided by 2 divided by 2 to the power 10 into half minus sorry or we can write it plus i into minus root 3 by 2 this whole to the power 10 sorry i missed the whole to the power 10 here whole to the power 10 okay so, this can be written as equal to this to straight away gets cancelled. Now, this half uh, plus i root 3, that means this can be written as cos pi by 3 plus i into sine pi by 3 whole to the power 10 divided by cos. Okay, I am leaving this for the time being. Let us settle that one first. Plus i into minus root 3 by 2. Now sine pi by 3 is root 3 by 2. So suddenly sine minus pi by 3. Suddenly sine minus pi by 3 will be minus root 3 by 2. Because we know sine minus theta is minus sine theta. And cos of minus pi by 3 equal to simply cos pi by 3. That is half. Because we know cos of minus theta is cos theta. So that means this can be further written as e to the power i pi by 3. So e to the power i into 10 pi by 3 divided by e to the power minus i into 10 pi by 3. Actually, it will be e to the power minus pi by i e to the power minus i pi by 3 whole to the power 10. So that means e to the power minus i into 10 pi by 3. So that means uh, this can be written as e to the power uh, say i into 20 pi divided by 3. i into e to the power 20 pi divided by 3. Now this can be simplified as e to the power i into 18 pi plus twice pi divided by 3. So this can be written as e to the power i into 6 pi because 18 pi by 3 is equal to 6 into e to the power i into twice pi by 3. Now e to the power 6 i into 6 pi. e to the power i into 6 pi means cos 6 pi plus i sin 6 pi. So that means cos 6 pi plus i into sin 6 pi e to the power i 6 pi. Now, and this is cos 2 pi by 3 plus i into sine 2 pi by 3. Now, cos 6 pi plus i sine 6 pi, that is 1 into cos 2 pi by 3 plus i sine 2 pi by 3. What is cos 2 pi by 3? That is minus half plus i into root 3 by 2. So, this is minus half plus i into root 3 divided by 2. So, this is our answer. So, the answer is this. And this is a simple application of Euler's formula. Nothing else.
the next problem square roots of minus i is equal to we have four options so we need to find out what is the square root of minus i let us quickly recall that if we have a complex number w which is rho e to the power i phi we discussed in our lecture 5 that nth root of w will be equal to nth root of rho this means the regular nth root of rho into e to the power i into phi by n plus twice k pi divided by n what is this k this k will be uh, any any value from 0 to n minus 1 so this is the n nth roots of the complex number w so that means if we have to find out square root of a complex number firstly we need to think what will be its polar representation so the polar representation of minus i can be written as minus i can be written as cos pi say minus pi by 2 plus i sine minus pi by 2 cos minus pi by 2 means cos pi by 2 uh, that is 0 and uh, sine minus pi by 2 is minus 1 so that is minus i so that means this is e to the power minus i into pi by 2 so that means i can further write it 1 into e to the power so in this problem for this particular problem uh, if i compare with our formula for this particular problem rho is equal to 1 phi is equal to minus pi by 2 n is equal to we need to find out square root so n is 2 and therefore k will be either 0 or 0 and 1 so for k equal to 0 we will get one square root for k equal to 1 we will get another square root fine let us find when k equals to 0 when k equals to 0 we get the square root as i am naming as z1 so z1 will be square root of nth nth root of rho that means square root of 1 because rho is 1 so that is 1 into so 1 into means if i write exactly in terms of this formula it will be square root of 1 into this square root means that the regular square root of 1 into e to the power i into phi by n so here phi is minus pi by 2 divided by n means here 2 again so divided by 2 so that is this is 2 so divided by 2 that means this will be e to the power minus i into pi by 4 so if i split it it is cosine cos minus pi by 4 plus i sine minus pi by 4 cos pi by 4 plus i sine minus pi by 4 so this is one square root and the another square root can be obtained for k equal to 1 and that i can if i denote by z2 again similarly nth root of rho that means square root of 1 into e to the power i into minus pi by 2 that is phi by n plus 2k pi by n so 2 into 1 into pi divided by n is 2 so that means this 2 gets cancelled so it is e to the power square root of 1 is 1 e to the power i into minus pi by 4 plus pi so that means minus pi by 4 plus pi means 3 pi by 4 so this will be cosine 3 pi divided by 4 plus i into sine 3 pi divided by 4 so these are the two square root of minus i these are the two square roots of minus i now if we scan all the options mm, yes option b is correct so that means our answer for this problem will be option b so this is our answer now if you closely inspect the options if you closely screen the options 
uh, you can straight away say without doing anything that your answer will be B. Because if you look at these uh, option C, for example, pi by 4, 3 pi by 4, the two angles are different. So this cannot be means a form. Rationally, this cannot be, uh, uh, say, e to the power in e to the power i theta form. Same thing happen in this case only. Uh, and this uh, cannot be the square root of i, this option. So only feasible option remains B. But to be sure, uh, uh, you can you can do the calculation and actually if you do one calculation means if you do do find out z1 only then only you can uh, you can you can answer it because um, this cos minus pi by 4 plus i sine minus pi by 4 is not occurring any in any other option but since options are given in this way you can answer if options are given in uh, some other way then you might have to do the entire calculation. So that's why better to know how we can solve a problem without without knowing this shortcuts only or doing back calculation from from options. I don't prefer that. I prefer straight away you should know how you can solve a problem. So that's it. This is uh, uh, the answer for this problem. The next one. If x is equal to root over of uh, square root of minus one, then x to the power x. It's a very popular and very easy problem. Actually, x is equal to square root of minus 1. That means actually i. So I can write this as cos pi by 2 plus i into sine pi by 2. That means this is e to the power i pi by 2 by Euler's formula. Therefore, x to the power x is equal to means actually i to the power i. That means e to the power i pi by 2 whole to the power i. That means e to the power i square pi by 2. That means e to the power minus pi by 2. So this is the answer. If we scan the options, here's option A. So here the answer is option A. It's pretty simple. Now I am leaving this last problem for you to solve. Solve this problem and let me know the answer in the comment section below. See you in the next video. Take care.